Alrighty guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be making a simple file guide. Now, I have some leftover aluminum from the surface grinder build and I have some carbide inserts from MSC Industries that I ordered and I'm hoping that I can make a very nice, very long lasting file guide. I plan on getting into some more forging coming up and I'd like to have a file guide for the hidden tang knives. So that is what we're going to build today. We're going to start off by going over the components of this build. First up are the carbide inserts from MSC Industries. These run about $15 a piece. And note that we didn't have to get that thick of a set of inserts because they don't wear. So we can go with a 332nd insert there. Next up is a piece of aluminum. I have some leftover half inch by two inch bar stock from my surface grinder build and then just some quarter 20 fasteners. I end up getting some longer bolts than these, but I'll show that later on in the video. I think I ended up with around a one and a half inch quarter 20 fastener. And then I'm gonna be using some stainless steel quarter inch rod. If you have access to some hardened rod, uh, that would probably be a better choice. Right off the bat, I noticed that our carbide inserts are not flat. You can see some daylight in between them when pressed together. There's about a five thousandths of an inch arc in these inserts. Being carbide, I really don't have any abrasives that can act on these and make them flat like sandpapers, ceramic belts. None of that will cut into this carbide. So I'm resorting to an old sharpener that I have that is diamond impregnated. I went to town for about two hours with this process trying to get these nice and flat. I didn't get them perfectly flat, but I got them way more flat than they came to me. So with all that being said, if you're going to be ordering these inserts, it would behoove you to have some sort of stone to try to get them flat with. A higher quality diamond stone or maybe some diamond impregnated lapping fluid or something along those lines would probably be better options than my cheap medium grit uh, sharpening stone off of Amazon. But anyway, this is how they turned out. Pretty close, not perfect, but I think they'll be fine for what we're doing here. So on to our aluminum jaws for this file guide. First thing I did was cut off a chunk of it. And then before we get onto the mill, I wanted to make sure that my table is nice and square. The column on these mini mills are actually made so that they can be adjusted to an angle. And unfortunately, this machine is not near rigid enough to be able to actually utilize that functionality. I really wish they would come with a solid column. As you just saw, it was off by about two thousandths over the length of the entire table. And for the sake of this project, I felt like that was adequate. If you're a machinist and you think that that was way wrong, please let me know in the comment section. I am more than willing to learn on this topic. These are the dimensions I'm going to be going with today. I made some changes on the fly from my original drawing. The jaws are going to be about half of an inch wide and three quarters of an inch tall. I marked them out roughly here, a little bit oversized, and then cut it out on my bandsaw. I'm then going to take these two pieces over to the mini mill and get them to the appropriate dimension. Get them all locked up into the vise, and then using a half inch end mill, I surface the top of these pieces so that they are nice and flat. I even mark the left and right side of each piece so that I can line those up in the future and any slant of my table, even though it's extremely small, will be compensated for at least when these two pieces are mated together. The rest of this is clean up. I'll start off with just knocking the burr off with a file and then I use some sandpaper on the granite plate to get the other surfaces nice and smooth. We'll next be lining up these two pieces together and clamping them together so that they can be drilled as a match pair. To do this, I precariously use a 3-2-1 block, a clamp, the granite plate, and a square. With much fidgeting and finagling here, I was able to get these nice and square to each other and clamped up. I then mark the center lines and center punch where I'm going to be drilling at these four holes. I'll use an eighth of an inch bit to get my hole started and then drill a number seven hole so that I can tap the bottom jaw to quarter 20. I'll then come back later 
and enlarge that number seven hole on the other jaw to a quarter inch so that the bolt will slide through one jaw and thread into the other. Once I get one hole drilled, I make sure to put a bit in that hole so it doesn't move around. I have two scrap pieces of aluminum here and what I am doing is testing out the two quarter inch bits that I own and then some other size bits just to make sure that I have the tightest fit possible with my quarter inch rods. My first quarter inch bit was definitely a little loose compared to the second quarter inch bit which was much tighter. I thought the D was going to actually be a winner but I guess my D bit has a good deal of run out on it and the number one and the D were actually pretty close to each other. The C obviously was just a little too small. So the number two, which was my second quarter inch bit, is gonna be the winner here, and that is what I used to drill the pin holes. So here I am drilling those pin holes. I have the hole assembly clamped down on top of some 321 blocks, and then I have it lined up so that the bit would pass through into one of the holes of the 123 blocks. We'll use a countersink here to clean up the holes, and then we will enlarge the number seven hole on our top jaw to the same uh, bit that we used for the pin holes. On the bottom jaw, we are going to get it lined up with a number seven bit in the mill, just to make sure that the mill is in line with the hole. And then I put the tap into the mill and start it with the mill chuck and the mill obviously disengaged so that I have a nice straightly tapped hole here on my bottom jaw. I repeat this process on both sides so that we have two quarter 20 holes that will attach these jaws together. I then cut off two pins and bevel the ends so that they'll slide in easily. And then I notice that the pin is actually a little larger than I thought it was and it does not fit into the pin holes. So very carefully, I take some sandpaper and take these pins down so that they're just big enough to get into these holes. The best way to do this for someone who's looking to make a more professional file guide than me is to have a reaming bit and you can make these holes exactly a quarter of an inch and probably get a better fit than I did. But this is how mine came together and I will now be affixing the carbide inserts on top of this file guide. Before doing that though, I noticed that my file guide did not sit flat when laid on top of my granite plate. So I laid down a piece of sandpaper and remedied that situation. I got the top fairly flat, and now we are going to be gluing the carbide inserts onto the top of this file guide. I like marking out where these inserts will land. This helps during the gluing process because you'll be able to slide these around into their appropriate location during the gluing process. Like all glue ups, the first step is to clean all the pieces thoroughly. I'm cleaning all my pieces with alcohol and then I'll be gluing these carbide inserts onto the top of the file guide with just some two-part West Systems epoxy. When placing these inserts on top of the jaws, I move them around a little bit so that they have a nice even layer of epoxy under them, and then I clean up around them so that there's not a huge amount of excess epoxy. You also wanna make sure that the carbide is not hanging over on the inside of the aluminum so that when you're clamping down on your knife, the carbide does not actually touch the knife. If it does, the clamping mechanism can actually pop off these inserts on your file guide. At this point, I thought that I was done. I got some longer bolts so that my file guide can open a little wider. And I got the whole thing put together and tightened down. And then I just realized that the top of the file guide, the two carbide inserts, weren't as square to each other or as even as I would like them to be. I ran a square over it multiple times, I put light behind it, and I just wasn't happy with the fit up of this file guide. It wasn't off by a lot, but I could definitely see just a little bit of daylight. So I decided to take these apart by applying a little bit of heat to the epoxy, and then just carefully knocking these inserts off. I want to mill the top of the file guide flat while both pieces are attached to each other and clamped down. I feel like this will help give me a better outcome. So I get the two jaws uh, screwed together tightly. I have the pins in there. I get them all up in the vise, and then using a half inch end mill, 
I mill the top of my file guide flat together. After I have it nice and milled up, I clean off the corners again, and then I'll be reattaching the carbide inserts onto this file guide the same way I did it the first time. However, before doing that for good measure, I went ahead and milled the bottom flat as well. The inserts had a little bit of epoxy left on them, so I went over to the belt sander and just ground that epoxy off. It's amazing working with this carbide because these belts don't do anything to the carbide. It's, it's really cool. So I get a little bit of epoxy on both sides here, get them lined up just like I did the first time, taking my time to get them even and to make sure that they're not touching the inside edge. I'm using that ruler there, the edge of it, to just slightly move these around back and forth until they're perfectly in line with each other, at least as good as my eye is. So then I get to test this thing out. I test it first on a hidden tang brooch that I was working on. Uh, if y'all follow the channel, you know that I ended up making a full tang brooch, so this one was a fail. However, the guard fit on this hidden tang brooch really wasn't that bad from my first attempt using this file guide. I've then used this on my first hidden tang knife and it worked well there. And I was able to grind against it multiple times and the grinder just didn't bite into it at all. So I'm really happy with the performance of the carbide and just the performance of this file guide in general. I got very nice straight lines and I was able to uh, successfully make a pretty good guard fit on my first hidden tang knife. I will mention that if you're looking at making wider blades, two inches may not be quite long enough, but they carry multiple sizes, so that shouldn't be an issue to get you some longer pieces. So this is how the guard fit turned out on this Hidden Tang Hunter, and I was fairly pleased with it considering my experience level. I also used this as a backstop on Kyle Royer's top platen, and it worked flawlessly there. And then I'm also using it to uh, be a backstop when I do my jimping on my full tang knives. So I think I'll get a lot of good use out of this file guide. If you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button down below and also consider subscribing to the channel. It'll really help us out. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.